I've used Zapier, Make, and Relay.app on real projects. Here's why I think Relay is shaking things up and where it still lags behind. For most use cases I see with clients, Relay gets the job done faster and cleaner than Zapier or Make, but it's not a clear win in every case. I'll walk you through the standout features, where it stumbles, and how to decide if it's right for you. Check it out. Welcome back. I'm Zach from InterDev Solutions. We help businesses streamline their processes using custom no-code tools so you can focus on what matters most. To learn more, you can visit our website, interdevsolutions.com, or use the link in the description below. Here are some of my favorite features within Relay and the core features that they focus on that differentiate themselves between Zapier and Make.com. So let's get into it. The first thing is the AI that is built into their tool natively. They make it really easy to use and it's seamless across all sorts of different types of applications and use cases. And I'll go through each of those right now. So within Relay, the number one thing that I like about it, it has credits built in. Many of the other tools, you have to go set up an account, whether that's with OpenAI or Claude, or you name the different tool that you have to get your own API key for, then you have to add your credit card to it. And it just takes a lot of time to set up. If you're someone that just wants to use one uh, type of AI model, meaning OpenAI or Anthropic or Gemini, then it's not that big of a deal. But if you want to be able to test and use different models, then Relay.app makes it really simple to do that. And again, that's all with built in credits. You do have the functionality and option to add your own API key, but you do not have to. It supports multiple AI models. They provide credits depending on the type of plan that you're on. You do get credits on all the plans, even on the free one, but you can add in your own key if you're using it on a heavier basis and exceed their credit limits. What I like using within Relay is the ability to pass in an attachment or PDF or an image from a previous step. For example, taking an invoice, passing it, directly to whatever AI model that you want, and it extracts the invoice, gets the data, including line items, and outputs it in a structured format that's easily usable in future steps. Other tools do not do this nearly as nicely as what Relay does. It's a lot more difficult and hacky to get something to work, but in Relay, you are able to pass in an attachment directly and get the data in a structured way. And then the last thing that I like about Relay within the AI part of it is the ability to add in a knowledge base. So the knowledge feature, it lets AI answer based on an uploaded document or some sort of structured text or really anything that you want to provide to the AI model on a consistent basis that it needs to reference. It can do this for you. And I'll show you a bunch of these different things right now. The first one, is if I go and click this plus icon, we can see that they have an AI section here. If we select it, they have a bunch of different options. So you can prompt any model. This allows you to set up your own custom prompt and structured text output and all those types of things. But they also have some pre-built options as well. Extract, summarize, classify, write text, and so on. And you can see that there's a bunch of different options built right in. But then if we also go into apps and I scroll through the list, you can see that I can specifically go to Anthropic. This is where I could add in my own API key. And that's the same for this assembly AI, open AI. And if I scroll through the list, you can see that there's a few other AI tools as well, including Grok, Perplexity, Quen, and so on. Now, if I click into, this was just a custom prompt, you can easily select, and this is using the AI credits available to you from Relay, you can select this drop down here and select a bunch of different models that they provide access to. And that's all using the AI credits so that you do not have to add in your own key. Now, this is based off the custom prompt. As I mentioned, you can get structured output. So if I select this expected response, we can just get text if that's fine. Or if you want the structured data, like when you're extracting data from an invoice, you can just select that option here. Before I click that, I want to show you something that's really cool that they've recently added to this. And that is setting up the structured output automatically using their own internal AI. So 
imagine I'm passing an invoice PDF. It would be really easy. This is where I could just click data from a previous step. And then I could go select that PDF that would be within this drop down here. And then I'm just saying you will be provided an invoice PDF, extract the following details. You can make the list a lot longer, but for example, you got customer name, billing address, total amount. But then the cool part is getting line items. So that's the same type of information, but different line items. For example, that could be multiple unit prices, quantities, and item names. And I've just listed that out here. Now, if I go over to the structured data and instead of coming in here and selecting each of these in the output format that I want, I can just click this auto generate and you can see that it's analyzing the prompt to understand the format that I want it in. And now let's go through this list. I just want a single response of the customer name, billing address, total amount. But then we can see here, it's going to get a list of line items and it will give me the unit price quantity and item name for each line item found, which I find is really cool. And then something else they've added recently is this is some of the built in human in the loop functionality they add to these AI steps is should a person review the AI output and you have a bunch of different options. And then you can also specify what you would like it to do if it cannot generate a valid input. The other thing I mentioned is this knowledge base. If I select it, we can see here that if I add a new source, we can add in some knowledge that gets passed to that model every single time, just based off of these different integrations here. It doesn't take the entire document that you pass it and go through everything and include it in the prompt and use additional credits. It just goes and searches out the most relevant piece of information. I touched on the human in the loop functionality based off of the AI step, but they also have their own independent actions as well. If I click this plus button and then we can go down to the human in the loop, it will show us a list of options that are available. We have approvals, we have getting data input, and we can complete a task. There is agentic tools that they are continually working on as well. This is something that I have explored in lesser detail, but from here, you can guide the tool to make different selections for you so they can go down the path of using different tools based off of rules that you may prompt it, but you can add different actions in here and give the AI model different details so it can decide which steps that it needs to take next. But again, that is something that's a little bit newer to me and I have not explored in too much detail yet. These human in the loop steps allow you to send notifications for the human intervention via Slack and email, and you can assign these human steps to specific team members or to a dynamic role. And then also there's options to set due dates and reminders for pending human actions. The other thing I really like about Relay is I find its UI is really intuitive and user-friendly compared to Make and Zapier. So it's easy to get started and build simple automations, even if you're really new at this stuff. And the other thing is you can easily access deeply nested data including from linked records from previously retrieved records without the need to add in an extra find or get step. What that would look like is let's say I'm finding a customer and here's my example. This Acme Corp has a customer record and then it's got a link to a contact. So in a lot of the other tools, once I've got that customer record, I would have to then use a step to get the actual contact. But the nice thing about Relay is they've already got it for us. I get the customer and then let's say I want to send an email to the actual contact that works at that customer. Then I can come on into here, select this drop down. Then I can go to the step three, which was find a customer. And then I can navigate to the link to contact and pass in the email which means I do not have to add in that get or find contact step, which is really nice as well. And the last feature I'm going to quickly touch on is the JavaScript function. So if I just type in JavaScript here, there's a custom code action that can be brought in. We can pass in the input. It will give us an output. And then there is a JavaScript code editor if we need to perform some more custom type of actions or modifications to the data within our system. Relay isn't perfect. It's a really good tool, but it does fall short compared to Zapier and make in a few areas. 
And the first one being is there's a smaller list of native integrations compared to Zapier and Make. There's only, I think, maybe a couple hundred at this point in time because it is a newer tool, but they are actively growing it. And if you do need to integrate with a tool that is not native to Relay, it does have the HTTP and webhook connection actions, but they are a little bit more difficult to set up. It's still a newer platform. There's some niche features that may be missing compared to Zapier and to Make, but there's also a lot of features that are much easier to use compared to those tools. Who should use Relay.app? If your core tools are already supported natively within Relay, it was probably going to be a great fit for you. If your workflows rely on heavy AI driven steps or structured data extraction or document processing, Relay simplifies this process, so it could be a good option. If you need human in the loop approvals, data inputs, or manual decision points at parts of your workflow, Relay is designed for this as well. And really it's ideal for teams focused on sales, recruiting, client communication, and a lot of different workflows Relay is definitely worth exploring. It's a powerful tool that keeps getting better. You can find the link in the description below to try it out. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more tutorials in the future.